everybody. Thanks for joining me. We're going to learn some facts off Reddit. So they might not be facts. But they're going to put you to sleep. That's a fact. Uh, today I learned that Bhutan is the world's only carbon negative country. Constitution demands at least 60% of the country covered in forest, making it a sink of over 4 million tons of CO2 per year. Hmm. Never heard it put like that, called a sink. Today I learned, because a teacher felt his students couldn't properly understand how the Nazis came to power, he role-played as an authoritarian. He managed to start a proto-fascist movement that swept across the school. Students even took it upon themselves to rat out those who are disloyal. Today I learned that the Queen of the UK has had her position as Queen since before 82% of the entire population of the UK was even born. Yeah, she's pretty old. that a party boat carrying 60 men and women I would imagine more men than women once capsized in Texas after all the passengers rushed to one side of the boat as it passed a nude beach Today I learned that in the 50s and 60s, Americans were told that by the year 2000, the normal work week would be 20 to 30 hours, and people would be committing suicide from boredom. Yeah, it's no joke that the 50s and 60s were especially optimistic. That's very telling. Today I learned that until a hard-fought vote that only passed 83 to 80 in 1985, condoms could not be sold in Ireland without a prescription because of the Catholic Church's influence. <laughs> wow. I didn't know that. That's... That's a serious influence. Today I learned that the Great Lakes in the US and Canada, the border, have at least 6,000 shipwrecks with some estimates as high as 25,000. Today I learned that in Japan, there are strict social rules for writing a resume. For example, photo must be attached along with detailed personal information 
Applicants use a uniform template. If it is written by hand, it must be in black ink with no white out. Photocopies are not accepted. Yeah, I guess that's a way to prevent bullshitting. Just by having a fancy looking resume, but... I feel like the format that you use with your resume can... Be indicative of your your ability to perceive oh. well it's like it's like the way you carry yourself I don't know I guess it could be formalized or uh, standardized but I feel like it shows I feel like it's telling enough about your unique character the way you format your resume but it can't be denied that it certainly distills and uh, makes the focus on the actual work that you've done I guess it's in J Japanese fashion a much more streamlined approach yeah I guess it's a um, an indication of your emotional your social aptitude it's kind of like I think it might be equivalent to how you dress yourself which we all had to wear uniforms, then I don't know that part of culture I feel like is very it allows you to demonstrate yeah that's a tough one. I think it can be taken too far and can take out the individual element of it. Here's one that's a nice example of how lies or falsities start. Today I learned that due to a researcher's offhand comment about octopus DNA seeming alien. Most, many news outlets mistakenly began reporting that cephalopods had actually come from outer space. Today I learned that there's a Batman miniseries called The White Knight which reverses the roles of Batman and the Joker. The comic takes place in a world where Joker has been rehabilitated and now has to save Gotham City from the Batman. I think you might have heard that. Interesting concept. I wonder why Batman would would have gone bad. Just lost it. Just went insane. Not enough credit. Today I learned that Japanese honeybees defend themselves against wasps by swarming them and baking them by vibrating their wings to 47 degrees Celsius. One, wow, 
just one degree above the wasp's max temperature. and 16.6 degrees. Well, that's fascinating. I've been, I've been, um, listening to the Joe Rogan podcast with Brett Weinstein and, and his wife forget her name, but he's an evolutionary biologist, and he, he was talking about how lizards, Komodo dragons, actually were able to, like, temporarily because they, they have been known to swim from island to island, and they had found, researchers had found instances where the Komodo dragon, um, actually switched to a, what's it, a hermaphrodite, when you can impregnate yourself, basically. And, uh, they seem to think that, I guess that was in contained, controlled environments at a zoo. And they seem to think that there is a likelihood that the Komodo dragon could have actually switched that some gene on, or some mechanism in its body due to emotional distress caused by loneliness if it had swam all the way to an island with bountiful resources, but had no one else to mate with. And I thought that was such a, like it's literally unbelievable. It's like science fiction, you know? Um, so anyways, that's another example of how biology can really amaze us, and uh, in my very near, at the top of my priorities on my ASMR to-do list is a video about the evolution of consciousness. I've been looking into that. I'm going to try to pull from a couple people, hopefully diverse, like obviously Jordan Peterson and Jung and Nietzsche, but also Terrence McKenna um, and Graham Hancock and some of the ideas that they espouse. As a teaser, it's going to contain the idea that perhaps civilizations aren't, civilization wasn't a, a linear trend, evolution from, developed out of a series of gradual improvements, incremental improvements over millions of years, but in fact, might be cyclical due to a, um, sort of a, a combination of natural disasters, such as terrestrial, you know, volcanoes, tsunamis, hurricanes, well, not hurricanes, that's not going to wipe out a civilization, um, uh, but also maybe extraterrestrial catastrophes such as um, comets, asteroids hitting the earth and heating up the atmosphere to 
cause melting and that catastrophic flood that all cultures have a version of in their myths that they think caused the sea level to rise. So I think it's very something to think about. something to look forward to. I'm going to make a video on that. I'm going to write it down and outline it so I don't ramble as much like I'm doing in this video. So, that was a nice little mid-video detour for you. Back to Reddit. Today I learned in 1903, two men in a pit bull made their first documented journey by automobile from San Francisco to New York using only a connection of dirt roads, cow paths, and railroad beds. The journey took 63 days, became a national sensation and called for a system of long-distance roads. Now this one's pretty interesting. If it's true. Today I learned Darwin. I assume they mean Charles. Had a gravel path installed at his home. That he would walk around each day as he thought about problems. He would stack stones at the heart of his walk and then knock, sorry, at the start of his walk and then knock them down one by one as he went round, describing the difficulty of the problem as a three, four, or five flint problem. It's a cool concept. Nietzsche, I think, always or espoused the idea that we should, shouldn't be sedentary while we're brainstorming or um, thinking through ideas. He thought we should always be moving around or walking. And uh, this seems to make sense your body is, you have nerves that extend all the way down through your body and up your spine, arms, legs, that go all the way to your brainstem. And there's ideas that your stomach even has a small primitive brain structure right above it. So, uh, I don't know, I just wanted to insert that because that's a really f interesting fact that I want to explore further. So maybe walking around, in fact, helps because you're physically moving. Use the entire extent of your brain nervous system combination system. I don't know if that made sense. Today I learned when an 8.0 magnitude earthquake hit Mexico City, a hospital collapsed, but nearly all babies survived. They're known as miracle babies for surviving seven days without nourishment, water, warmth, or human contact. Jesus. And that's from Wikipedia, so... That's an amazing story. Certain mammals, such as the red kangaroo or roo deer, can perform embryonic diapause, the ability to pause embryo development in unfavorable environmental conditions. 
effectively saving the embryo and the mother's life in bad conditions. Wow. That's so cool. Maybe I'll just do a... Maybe there's a subreddit just about evolutionary biology. Because there's so many fascinating things to learn about the world. Today I learned that there exists a single fungal colony, colony of fungus, in northern Michigan that stretches across 37 acres, weighs 21,000 pounds, I don't know how you would weigh that, I guess they just do some math or something and is around 1,500 years old. 1,500 years old. Wow. How do they know that? That's so crazy. My mind is stretched by that one. Today I learned about perpetual still, common in the Middle Ages. It was a stew that was kept constantly stewing in a pot and rarely emptied, just constantly replenished with whatever items they could throw in it. It's like, um, I heard one time that in Philadelphia at some cheese steak places, they have a pot of melted cheese in the back that they, I don't think they've cleaned out for 40 years or something really crazy long like that. And, um, if you haven't cleaned it out, even if you empty with a ladle all the cheese out of it and you still have the little bit at the bottom, then technically there's got to be still some molecules of cheese in there that are 40 years old. And I guess because it's always mostly emptied out, that it doesn't um, corrode. What am I thinking of? Um, the cheese won't spoil, I guess. So I guess that makes me wonder at what, um, at what age, or no, at what molecular size, how many molecules of cheese does it take for fungus or spoiling for it to rotten, rot, for it to rotten, for it to become rotten. So anyways, that's really crazy. And the last one here, today I learned that within 48 hours quitting smoking, your senses of smell and taste begin to return to normal. That's cool. I feel like I can end on a better note though. Maybe I'm reading this wrong, but today I learned that the Olympic rings 
actually designed in 1912, were mistakenly thought to be an ancient Greek symbol. After researchers in the 1950s found a stone with a symbol carved on it in Delphi, but the stone turned out to be a leftover from a ceremony held there for the 1936 Berlin Olympics. And do these last three. Today I learned in 1918 there was an outbreak of the Spanish flu. It was called that because during World War I when it happened, Many countries had limits on what the press could write about, except Spain, who was neutral. Thus, more reports came out about the flu from Spain, causing people to think it was just happening there. It's really interesting that history names, nomenclature, well-known um, events can have a random, can, can be the offshoot of a random effect, you know, not intended by something as seemingly removed from the naming of a flu disease. Like, uh, the, um, curtailing of the freedom of press, the suppressing of the press, I guess you would say, and that's, that's why history is so interesting to me. It's like, history is just a series of accidents and unintended, intended consequences. But yet, somehow, we're here, we're getting better, and... Yeah. I guess... I just like it because there's so much to learn. Like I wonder why, what all the reactions against the fact that that was named the Spanish flu was. People probably avoided Spain for a while, tourists. They probably lost a lot of income due to that. People thinking that Spain was somehow infected with the flu while other countries weren't. It's interesting. And lastly, today I learned that doctors in the Civil War used hypnosis to soothe soldiers before surgery. So, before surgery, they put soldiers in a trance from hypnosis, so it goes to show you the power of ASMR. I think that there's a very, very tight link between ASMR and hypnosis. Maybe I'll explore that in a future video. But for now, I'm going to sign off and wish you all a very, very relaxing night. Sleep well.